So, um, hey, uh, Jeff mentioned a little bit earlier about the Jerusalem ministry. Uh, if just in case you're not a hundred percent sure what Jerusalem ministry is, is Acts chapter one verse eight tells tells us that uh, we'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, so that we can be His witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, our Jerusalem is right here in Springdale, Arkansas. So he's given us, he's empowered us to do ministry right here in Springdale, Arkansas. And one of the ways that we do that ministry is we put together snack packs for the, uh, for, for Elmdale Elementary School. So, uh, there's, there's other ways that we do Jerusalem ministry. There's a bus ministry. Uh, they bring in kids from all over, uh, the area to, uh, to, to be a part of, uh, the Sunday school and splat here. That's part of Jerusalem ministry. And there's numerous others. So, uh, if you are interested in helping with that Jerusalem ministry, if you're interested, as soon as church is over, uh, just actually, you just see me, I'll be at, where did I stand last? I think I stood there, which means I'll be on that side this week. Um, uh, but just let me know, and I'll make sure you can get back there and you can help uh, fill these snack packs so that kids who don't have any, uh, who wouldn't have any snacks, wouldn't have any uh, food throughout the week are going to be able to have some because you fill those snack packs. Sound good? All right. See, that, that's a great ministry, great opportunity to serve Christ and to serve the Lord. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. Just open to Proverbs 14 is where we'll start here in just a minute. But as we think about things that, that are hard, things that are difficult, a few things come to my mind. One of the things that's hard is change, right? Uh, if you ever had to move... You know that moving is change, and that type of change is hard. Uh, If you've ever had to start a new job, starting a new job is change. That kind of change can be strenuous. It can be hard. Starting a new school is hard. Uh, it's, it's change. Change is hard. You see, you see how this change works in a lot of different ways. You know, today I can, uh, I can speak very, very, uh, well, I can speak today because I'm a preacher, but here's the thing, I turned 37 today. One of the things is, is the older I get, the more I realize I can't do the same things I used to could do. Change. It's hard. I'll never forget this one time, and this, and I know I got lots of those changes left ahead of me, so, um, but, but one of those, one of those changes is, I, I can never forget about a year and a half ago, we went to a place in Lubbock, Texas, just, just to have fun, and they got these, these trampolines where you just jump high, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm just 35 years old. I can handle this. This would be fun. In fact, I always wanted a trampoline when I was a kid and never got one because they were dangerous. Uh, and probably expensive, but that's another story. So we, we went, and, and I wished I hadn't gone. <laughs> I wished I hadn't gone, because it ruined, really, for me, the rest of the weekend, because my back hurt the rest of the weekend. Change is hard, uh, and, and as, as we grow, those, as we get older, those changes become more and more numerous. Another thing that's hard is unforeseen circumstances. You know, you never really prepare for that night you spend in the emergency room, do you? You never really are ready for that diagnosis that the, doc- that the doctor gives you, are you? You never expect those things. You're never really ready. It, it's hard when you find out that that, that person close to you or that those parents or those kids, uh, that, that their marriage is, isn't going to make it. It's hard. Those unforeseen circumstances are, are hard. And there's numerous other things that we find hard, but I want to talk about something today that's hard, that touches every single other difficulty that we face in our life. Because this is, this is something that's so real to every single one of us. No matter how hard we try to get away from it, it's real to us. So the third thing, or the thing that I really want to hit on today that's hard, is Relationships. Relationships are hard. Because whether, whether they're relationships at home, whether they're relationships at work, whether they're relationships at church, relationships are just difficult. They're messy. Because people do things that you think you know they ought not to do. 
People say things that they wish they hadn't said. You've said things that you wished you could take back. Relationships are important because we all need people. And whether you're here today and you're, and you're a Christian or not, whether maybe, maybe you're, it's not even that you're not a Christian, maybe you're still not even sure whether you believe in, in God or whether you trust the Bible or not, there's one thing, this is one thing that we can agree on. We need relationships. We need people in our lives. We can't, we can't live without having people in our lives. So God talks about that, and He talks about that a lot. In fact, the whole Bible is filled with people and with relationships. It's about a people who was, who was trying to have, who God created to have a relationship with Him. I mean, the fact that God even created us, created us in His image, and then created us so that we could have relationship with Him. Relationships are everywhere, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. So if you've got your Bible, I want you to look with me in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs uh, talks a lot about relationships. Now Proverbs is a certain type of literature in the Bible called wisdom literature. There's not a lot of it in the Bible, but there's a, there's a few books in the Bible that, that consist of this, this wisdom literature. And Proverbs is one of those, those books. And, and a proverb, we need to understand what a proverb is. A proverb is not a promise. There are certain Proverbs that you look at and you think, well, that's a promise from God. And then you see it doesn't work out that way. And you think, well, God broke His promise. A proverb is not a promise. What a proverb is, is a proverb is a statement about how life generally works. So what happened was, was Solomon, who, was, who the Bible says was the wisest man to ever live, Solomon wrote down all of, a, a bunch of short statements, a bunch of short, just proverbs about things that he had learned about life, things that he had seen. And he, and he realized, generally, this is, how life, this is how life works. So as we look in the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And if, if there were any book uh, other than, than maybe one of the Gospels that I would encourage you to just jump into that's just filled with application, it would be the book of Proverbs. I would encourage you to spend to, to read a proverb every single day. And even when you think you're not getting anything out of it, I promise you, if you do it consistently over time, you're going to get something out of it. But in Proverbs, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 14 is where I'm going to start. We're just going to look at a couple of verses in Proverbs 14, verse 4. We're talking about relationships. And so this is what he says in Proverbs 14, verse 4. He says, Where there are no oxen, the feeding trough, or the manger, or the, the barn, where there are no oxen, the barn is clean. But an, ab an abundant harvest comes through the strength of an ox. Well, good, Billy. Maybe you're thinking right now, well, that's interesting. But what does that have to do with relationships? Well, I'm glad you asked. That has everything to do with relationships. First, let's look at the actual meaning of the verse. And here's what the meaning of the verse is. There's a minor advantage to not having any oxen in the barn. But there's a major advantage when you have oxen in the barn. Think about it this way. If you, if you have an ox in the barn, or if you don't have an ox in the barn, you don't have an ox in the fields. If you don't have an ox in the fields, guess what? You don't have the fields being plowed. If the fields aren't plowed, when you drop seed or when you plant seeds, you can't grow food. If you can't grow food, there's no harvest. If there's no harvest, there's no food to eat to feed your family. But at least you didn't have an ox. You're a winner. Christian relationships are a lot like an ox. They're messy. We're all the time having to clean up relational poop. Aren't we? 
We're all the time having to deal, deal with relationships. And, and I want to speak specifically about Christian relationships, okay? We need marriages. That's why God, that's why God brings, brings men and, and women together. For, for those type of relationships. We need, we need friends who are outside of the church. We need friends in, in every area. We need relationships with our parents, with our kids. We need all these relationships. But I want to focus on the re- relationships with other believers. Christian relationships are just, are just messy like any other relationship. Because, because letting, letting people in your life hurts, doesn't it? I mean, because, because, you know, inevitably, we're going to do something and we're going to say something that we wish we wouldn't have said. We're going we're gonna to we're gonna, we're gonna go too far. We're going to tell people more. They're going to say it to somebody else. And before you know it, it's all, it's all over the place. I mean, relationships are just difficult to, to have in our lives. We say things in the heat of the moment and we end up having to apologize. We have different backgrounds, we have different likes, we have different dislikes. Relationships are hard. But those same relationships that are messy also have greater benefit than any mess we could ever make with them if we stick them out. Listen to what Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17 says. It says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. One of the benefits of relationships with other, with other Christians, with other believers, is, is they're there for us when times get rough. They're there for us when times get hard. Then, uh, then also Proverbs 13, 18 says, the tongue of the wise brings healing. We can actually heal people. We can actually help people with the words that we say. The Bible says that, 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 that our words have the capacity to, to give life or to take life away. The tongue of the wise brings healing. When you have relationships of people, with people you love and that you know and you've built relationships with, you have the capacity to give life to those people. Proverbs 27, 17 says this, Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Another one of the benefits of relationships with other followers of Christ is we make each other stronger. We sharpen one another. We build each other up. Another one of the wisdom books in the Bible is Ecclesiastes. It's a great book to read, but I wouldn't advise you to read it on a bad day. Because, because uh, Solomon wrote that book as well. And he just gives, he gives some wisdom about life from the beginning to, to end. And he says, he says some stuff in there that, that can be very depressing. But yet we find out that it's very true. But I want you to listen to these particular verses. Uh, and what he, one of the things that he learned in life. He said, two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their efforts. In other words, we can get more done when there's two of us or three of us or a handful of us together than we can do if we're by ourselves. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up. When we're hurt, when we fall, we've got somebody to help us lift up. We've got somebody to care for us. He says, but pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person keep warm alone? And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. See, here's the point. There's a greater benefit in building strong Christian relationships than there are staying away from them. There's a greater benefit for us to to make the effort, to take the effort of cleaning up that poop that comes with relationships than just leaving them alone. And that leads me to the second verse in Proverbs that I want to I talk to you about. Look in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4. This is what it says. It says, the slacker 
Anybody know what a slacker is? A lazy person. I lo- that's one of the reasons I, I love the Holman Christian Standard Version, because I like that word slacker. The slacker does not plow during planting season. At harvest time, he looks and there's nothing. The slacker does not plow during planting season. At harvest time, he looks and there is nothing. Now, I'm not a farmer. But I know that there's a certain season and there's a certain time for planting. And if you don't plant during that season, then when harvest time comes around, guess what? It doesn't matter how many oxen you have in the barn. If you don't get out there and plant the seeds, you're not going to have anything to show for it at harvest. So if you miss that time when harvest comes around, you're not going to have anything to show for it. See, plowing, when we're talking about relationships, plowing is that time that you use to build relationships. Plowing, plowing is that hard part. You know, the great part after, after you've planted something is that part where you, where you get to go and you get to actually eat what you've planted, if you're a vegetable kind of guy. I'm particular, particularly, I'm not a vegetable kind of guy, but... That's the benefit of it. That's the part that you, you enjoy. But you want to know the hard part of, of, of farming? It's, it's not the eating part. That's the great part. It's the plowing. It's all the hard work that comes before you get to harvest that food. And it's the same way with relationships. The hard part is, is the building the relationships. Because when we're building relationships, that's when all the, when all the, you know, the poop hits the, you know, you know where I'm going with that, right? That's, that's hard. But you see, the benefit of relationships is when things get hard. When things get rough. When they're difficult. Plowing is the time in relationships when you faithfully go to Sunday school classes even when you don't feel like getting up that morning it's when you go to those fellowships even when you got work to finish plowing is the part where you where you go watch football together when you go watch basketball games together now you may not read the bible together at that particular time but you but you do life together Plowing is the time when you, you go back and splat and you serve in a ministry together. Or when you go and you serve in Jerusalem ministry together. Plowing is the time when you, when you just do the hard work of building those relationships. But unfortunately, plowing is also the time when people say things that they wish they hadn't said. When people do things that they wish they wouldn't have done. Plowing is the time when, when the feelings get hurt. Plowing is the time where we have to forgive each other. It's the time when we have to say we're sorry. Plowing is the time when we, when we have to apologize. See, plowing is hard. But if you don't plow, you don't get the benefit of what comes at the harvest time. And see, if we're, not, if we're not sowing seeds and if we're not taking advantage of the good times when, when, when we can build relationships with other Christians and other believers, guess what? Those times when things are hard, there's not anybody there for us. Those times when things get rough, there's something that's, that's happened in every church, and I guarantee it's happened in this church Lots of times. It might have happened to you in this church or in some church. But here's what it is. It's that scenario where, where somebody comes to church for a little while and then, and then they start to fall out. They, they, they get busy and they start doing other things. And then something goes wrong in their family. Something goes wrong at home. And nobody from the church calls. Nobody from the church comes over to check on them. 
No, I'm not saying that the church, that people in the church don't have some, uh, some responsibility even in those situations. But we, we get upset because nobody's there for us when we need them the most. And when, when the reality is, rather than placing blame, and listen, in the moment of it, this doesn't come to our minds, okay? I'm, I know that because I've been there. But the reality of it, when we look, look back, guess what we find out? We find out, well, well, I'd been skipping church for six months. I didn't go to Sunday school. I went to worship, but I didn't go to, uh, I went, but I didn't go to Sunday school. I went to worship two or three times a, a, a month, but I, but I didn't go to the fellowships. I missed the Super Bowl parties. And we thought, I can't believe they didn't come see me. And listen, I know it. I've been there. But see, my point is, that's why we build relationships. It's so that you've, got, you've built relationships that are so strong that they don't break. In fact, when times get tough, that's when they get stronger. Because they show up at your doorstep. They send you a text. They send you a message on Facebook. They give you a phone call. Those don't happen just because you sign your name to a, a, a card to join this church. Did you know that? It might happen for a little while. But it doesn't happen long term. See, it's hard work building relationships. I'm going to tell you how big a deal this is. I don't know how many of you remember or know the story of me and my, my family when we went to Hobbs, New Mexico. We went to Hobbs. I went as an associate pastor. A friend of mine was the pastor at the time. About two or three months into it, he leaves as pastor and he goes back to, uh, back to Alabama where he was from and, he's pastoring, and he pastors a church there, still pastoring there. Now me and, my, me and my family come there and the only connection that we had was gone. Had left. You want to know how, how we stayed in Hobbs, New Mexico for seven years? 18 hours from my mom and dad. 14 hours from my wife's family. We didn't do it because we went to Bible studies every Sunday. We didn't do it because we showed up at church Every Sunday. Although that helped. We did it because we went to barbecues. We did it because, because they invited us over on Labor Day. We did it because we went to Sunday school parties. Because we went to Super Bowl parties. The reason we were able to stay there for seven years was because we built relationships. And one of the hardest things to do as followers of Christ, one of the hardest things to do in the world is to build strong, lasting relationships. It's because it takes a lot of patience. Because people are messy. Y'all are a mess. I mean, I know y'all think y'all put on your Sunday best here today, but y'all don't y'all don't always look that good. I don't always look this good. I'm just kidding, okay? Relationships are just messy. They're hard. But yet they're part of what God created. And if we want, if we want to, to know that people are going to be there when times get rough, we need to build those relationships. And now here's, here's the problem that we face. And I just, I'm going I'm to mention this because I want you to know that I'm, this isn't just preacher talk up here of, you know, all the, this, this is the way life should be. It, it, it is, but I need you to understand that I understand life. It's busy. We got jobs. We got family. We got errands to run. We got doctor's appointments. We've got, uh, we've got weekend visits to family. We've got to take care of our, our parents. We've got, you know, you name it. There's ten, we got 
chores around the house. I mean, we've got all of these things to take care of, all these issues that are going on in our life that need our attention. And the first thing that normally gets dropped when, when life gets in the way is, is, number one, it's our relationship with God. And just right with that is relationship with other believers. See, I know life is busy. I could spend my whole time, my whole life, doing church work and church ministry and never build relationships with you people. And the thing is, if the church was growing, y'all would be okay with it. But that's not God's plan. That's not God's will for us. And experience has taught us to keep people at arm's length. Not, don't let them get too close. Our flesh tells us and, and the devil tells us You don't need anybody for that. You don't need help. They don't understand anyways. One of of his lies is is nobody knows what you're going through. Nobody can, can relate to what you're going through. But I'm here to tell you that's a lie. People know. People have experienced. There's people in this room. Some of you are going through things right now that are hard, hard, hard. But there's other people in this room that have been through experiences much the same as what you're going through. But you don't get to experience the blessing of those relationships. Because you haven't done the hard work of building those relationships. Go into those parties. Go into that Sunday school class on a regular basis. Go into that care group. And I also want to make sure another thing is, is known as well. If you've been in church for any amount of time, you've been hurt in church. We all have. And those, those hurts and those pains don't go away quickly. They don't go away easily. I mean, and those are the, those are the things that keep us keep us away from church for many of us. I mean, the only ones of you that that, that kept coming in the midst of those difficulties, you're just hard-headed, aren't you? I don't want any elbow and husbands or wives here, okay? I'm just, but this is the reality. Some of us are just hard-headed. But then here's the problem with that. Even when we stay despite the, those, those hurt feelings without actually dealing with those hurt feelings, we just poison the whole atmosphere, don't we? We cause even, even deeper, deeper and even greater problems. And so what God, what God wants us to do is He wants us to, to deal with those things. Now, this, this is one of the greatest things about, about the church. Uh, the church is the greatest picture of the gospel. It's so genius that I think God must have come up with it himself. The church is is such a great picture of the gospel because, uh, because of the fact that we are messy. Because of the fact that we do things to hurt one another. And then we forgive each other. We come to each other and we talk about it. The church that is the greatest and most effective picture of the gospel is the church that talks about those things together. When somebody's hurt you, you go to that person and you say, listen, I need to talk to you. That's that's God's plan and that's God's purpose. So so here's, here's what the challenge is for us today. I'm going to ask you to make a hard decision. I'm going to ask ask you to take a hard path. I want you to keep spending time daily in the Word, because that's what we've been talking about. Spending time, quiet time with God. Making Him a priority in your life. But not only do I want you to make, make God a priority in your life by spending time in the Word and in prayer, I want you to make God a priority in your life by spending time with other believers. 
I want you to begin to begin plowing that hard ground right now. And this can be harder for some of you than it is for others because, because some of you are like me, and y'all aren't going to believe this, but some of you are introverts just like I am. This Standing right here is the last place I want to be. I hate being the center of attention. In fact, I wish y'all would quit looking at me right now. No, but I really do. I hate being the center of attention. And for those of us who hate being the center of attention and, we, and we, we're not good at, at meeting other people, it, it takes a little extra work from us, doesn't it? So this is going to be a little bit harder challenge for you than it is for some of the other people that, that, that are extroverts. But that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to build relationships. Not those kind of relationships that, hey, how's the weather today? Oh, you like the weather out there? How about them hogs? <laughs> now, I'm sure those, are, those make for some good conversations, some pretty lively conversations at times. But he's talking about relationships that are deeper than those. Okay, so Billy, how do we build those kind of relationships? Number one, if you're taking notes. Number one. Go to a Super Bowl party with some, with some brothers and sisters in Christ next Sunday night. After the pounding. <laughs> but here's the thing. See, some of your Sunday school class, you need to get together for a Super Bowl party. We're not going to have church after the pounding next week. And before, I don't want any emails about canceling church for the Super Bowl because we're not canceling church. We're moving church. We're moving churches to house, church to houses. We're, we're going to quit. Next Sunday, we're going to practice not allowing this building to, to hold us in. And, and have, a, have a Super Bowl party with some of your brothers and sisters in Christ, with your Sunday school class. Sunday school teachers, you plan one. I know you only got a week ahead, but everybody's going to be doing something for that anyways. That's a great place to build relationships. It's a great place to just talk about life and talk about what's going on. It's a great, great place to eat together. And we Baptists love to eat together. But that's not the only thing. The other thing is, and this is, this is going to be even harder, you need to get involved in a Sunday school class. Because you're never going to build strong relationships, relationships just sitting in, in here. You're just not. You need to go, you need to get involved with a smaller group of, of believers. You don't have to talk about the Bible once you, I mean, you don't have to answer questions about the Bible once you go in there, you know. Because you, you, you're a little bit afraid, well, they're going to ask me questions. They're going to expect me to know more than that. They're not going to ask you to answer anything. They're not going to ask you to read if you, don't, if you don't volunteer yourself. But if you open up, if you go in there and just take a chance, you might find somebody that you have, uh, that you have something in common with. You might find somebody that, 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 that you connect with. And let's say you go to one of those Sunday school classes, and if you've got a question about one that you want to go to, just, just come ask me. I'll make sure you get one. And I, and I love talking about that stuff. And let's say you go to one that you just don't find that person that you connect with. Go to another one. That's why we have lots of them. But get involved in a Sunday school class. Third, if you're here and you're currently a member of a Sunday school class, somebody comes to your mind that you need to invite. Somebody comes to your mind that you need to just call them up and say, hey, I want to invite you to my Sunday school class. And if they don't come, just send them a text every now and say, hey, I just want to know, I still want you to come to Sunday school. Find somebody else. You want to know how you get a bigger harvest? You plant more seeds. Isn't that right? Just plant more seeds. Invite more people. But get involved. And then fourth, be prepared. Because relationships are messy. Relationships are hard. Don't give up on them. Somebody's going to say something that's going to get under your skin. 
Don't let it. And if it's something you just can't pass up, you need to go to that person one-on-one and you need to say, hey, I need to talk to you. But here's what God's will, God's plan is for you. You want to be successful in 2015? Prioritize God in your life. Prioritize Him in your daily life and then prioritize time to be with other believers. And again, I know that, that, that so many of us in this room could give great reasons why not to obey this message. Great, great emotional reasons why not to obey this message. But I can give you one reason why to obey it. Because it didn't come from me. Because it came from God. It came from His Word. And this is God's plan. This is God's will for you. If you're here today and you have questions about salvation... I'm going to give you two choices. One of them requires a little more boldness than the other, but, it's, but I'm going to give you two choices nonetheless. One of the choices is you can get one of those guest cards and you can fill it out and you can just put, I want to know more about salvation on there. And then you can hand it to me or you can leave it on the pew and we'll get it later. Or... You could come right down here because I'm going to stand down here in just a minute. And you can say, Billy, I need to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I know I'm a sinner and I deserve to be punished, but I accept the gift that Christ gave to me. And I want to tell everybody. You might be here and you've already done that, but you've never been baptized. And it's time for you to be baptized Not because the preacher said you need to be. Not because that's how you become a member of a church. It's because that's the command that Jesus gave. Because that's an act of obedience that we make. And you might be here and you might want to be a member of Elmdale Baptist Church. Great. I want you to come to me and I want you to tell me that as well. I want to share that good news with the church. But I want you to understand, if you're going to become a member of Elmdale Baptist Church, you need to know that it's not just about sitting here on Sunday staring at me. There's much better things to do than that. It's about plugging into a Sunday school class, building relationships, getting involved in ministry, about serving. It's about discipleship about being discipled and discipling others. So I'm going to ask if you would to bow with me, and we're going to pray. I'm going to ask Jeff. He's going to come, and he's going to lead us in a, in a word of, uh, in, in, a, uh, in a song of invitation. But let's pray right now. Father God.